my name is Jeff Feligno and in this tutorial we will be going over how to make a printable character inside ZBrush. So this is a pretty typical start. I'm just grabbing a Z-Sphere and I'm going to start to make a skeleton for the character. I don't mind starting a character this way but I don't really go crazy with the Z-Spheres. Um, you know I'm not going to put a head or hands and fingers into this z-sphere it's just something where I'm getting it just to size out the the really basic proportions of the character so it's like you know how how big is his torso how long are his arms that sort of thing um, and maybe this you can see here just like a basic standing gesture uh, but again really simple so you can see like right away I I'm like, you know what, this, this is good enough, uh, let's just get sculpting. So uh, here's my here's my base mesh. Um, and from here I'm just going to grab the inflate brush and then probably the clay brush or clay tubes brush and, and get sculpting on them. Uh, here we go, I sped up the video so you don't have to sit through this whole thing. And here it's just uh, like right off the bat I'm just trying to fill the character up, uh, give him some mass, and sort of sort out how his weight is being carried. Usually, like early on, I'll hide the arm so I can relate the rib cage to the hips, make sure that they're on top of each other correctly. Uh, and this is just some, some rough anatomy, so I'm sort of throwing in the hip bones, sort of throwing in the rib cage. Uh, you know, I, I want to fill out his back because with the mesh early on, the mesh is so weird that I'm in a hurry to make it look like human anatomy. I want this character to have sort of giant forearms uh, and then these weird legs. I have a sketch. I'm not gonna. I won't show my sketch because my my drawings are terrible. Since we're making this piece with the intention that it will be printed, there are some things to keep in mind. Uh, one. You don't want the mesh so thin that the machine will have a tough time printing it. Actually later we'll go over how to avoid sorts of issues like that. Um, but the main thing is don't keep things so thin that they won't print and keep in mind how real gravity will affect your model. Because uh, inside the computer there's no real rules. You can, you can do whatever, but uh, if you're actually going to print it then you have to ask yourself, is this thing really going to stand up? Can this thing really bear its own weight? Uh, so my usual method of working is I'll, I'll grab a limb and I'll sculpt it to a certain level of detail <clears throat> and then I'll hop to another limb and just circle around and around the character until I can't think of anything else to do with it. And I mean that that never happens, uh, it's just you never really finish a character but uh, you, you do the best you can until you burn out and uh, then you start over again. The anatomy, if you're doing monster anatomy it's not like it has to be um, accurate it just has to be believable enough so that you can weird it out with some monster shapes. Uh, and with this guy, he's just going to be a mixture of human anatomy and sort of big, broad shapes. Uh, it, it's something I've done with my work before, and uh, I think in this case it'll make a nice print. Okay, so this guy's looking pretty good. Um, I'm not going to sculpt the whole thing in front of you guys. I just wanted to show you how I go from nothing to this rough anatomy. Uh, so this is it for the first chapter. Uh, next chapter we'll be adding some other parts to this character and some retopology technique.